Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for making this a part of your day, for taking a moment to focus on the things of God. Today we're going to look at a short passage in Daniel chapter 3, and it's a part of a much larger story, as I guess is all passages are. But this is a part of a story that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. It's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. One of the most familiar stories, I would think, in the Bible. And today we're going to look in Daniel chapter 3, and we're going to start reading in verse 16. And we'll just read a couple of verses. The Bible says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, listen to that, even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. You know, one of the major lessons I think we all have to learn as we go through our life as a Christian is, is that <clears throat> difficult things don't steer clear of us. We have to keep guessing every day, just like everybody else, whether or not we're going to get through the day or what kind of challenges we might have to face. We're not immune to trials. I'm sure over the years there have been people who became Christians believing that maybe all of their troubles would go away, but that's just not the case. In fact, the early Christians were told by Jesus that they needed to take up their cross and follow him. And in fact, those early Christians were some of the most persecuted people in the world. Just because you're a follower of Christ doesn't mean that you have to leave that cross behind. But there is one promise that we can hold on to. No matter what the outcome may be and the things that we go through, we know that if God doesn't deliver us here, that he will definitely deliver us in eternity. And one of the greatest stories of deliverance is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When you read about King Nebuchadnezzar, he's actually an example of just how foolish we are as humans. Now, in this particular story, sometimes we forget that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had had more than one run-in with the king. They actually started with the names, their real names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And then their names were changed by the king. But you might remember the king wanted them to, to eat the diet of the kingdom, and they said they needed to stay uh, true to the diet of their beliefs. And so they had a sort of a competition. And after 10 days, it was obvious that the diet that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were following was much better than the diet the king's men had. And then you may remember the story of Daniel, who was also a part of uh, this group of, of men who were brought into the kingdom. He was able to interpret the king's dreams for him. And you would think that after experiences like that, that the king would start to realize that the God those men served was actually the God. But apparently not, because King Nebuchadnezzar decided to build a 90 by 90 statue out in the middle of the plain of Dura. And then he called all of his leaders to come together to dedicate the statue. Now the plan was simple enough. When the music starts playing, everybody bow down. If you don't bow down, you get thrown into the fiery furnace. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to make a decision whether to stay faithful to God or whether to bow down to a false idol. And they decided to do what was right and not bow down. You know, there are Christians all over the world facing these same types of traumatic choices every day. And some of them are going to be killed for taking their stand. In this country, we might get a mean tweet or a bad comment on social media or something like that. And it might bruise our egos a little bit. And I guess in some ways, maybe you can call that a fiery furnace. But listen, faith is the tool that God gives us to overcome those tough times. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were willing 
to become martyrs, and they knew that that was very much a possibility. In fact, that's why I chose the passage that I chose, because they said to the king outright, uh, we believe God's going to deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow down. They knew the possibility of being killed in that situation was there. But even though they knew the possibility of physical death was very real, they stayed true to their calling. And that's something you see of other followers of God in the, in the scripture. In Job chapter 13 and verse 15, Job was going through some horrible times and the statement he made is that even though he slay me, yet will I trust him. He wasn't gonna back down from God. Paul made a statement of the same kind of hope in Philippians chapter one in verse 21, where he said to live is Christ, to die is gain. See, the fact that we have the Holy Spirit in us is the reason for our hope. God uses the Holy Spirit to counsel us in those times that we need it the most. You know, in that story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the, the guards that were taking them down the fiery furnace, it was so hot that those guards died from the heat. And that was proof to everyone there, and it was proof still to us today, that it was very real, and the possibility of death was there. Just like the story of the Red Sea, where Pharaoh's army is drowned in the sea. But the climax of this story comes when the king and his men look into the furnace, and they see the presence of a fourth person. Now, we're reading this story on this side of the resurrection. So even though in this uh, story they describe that fourth man as looking like a son of the gods, we know, in fact, it was the son of God in that furnace. At the end of the story of, of, Neb of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Nebuchadnezzar made a decree that the God of those men was the God. So he may have been a little slow on the uptake, but he finally got with the program. And I have no idea how long that decree lasted, but it doesn't matter because the point is that God protects his own. You know, that same scenario has been reenacted all through the centuries. Not all the people that had to face the fiery furnaces were spared earthly death. There are plenty of people who've gone to their death for the cause of Christ. But here's an important point, and this is what I want you to, to hold on to. Faith isn't trying to believe in spite of the evidence. It's daring to believe in spite of the consequences. There may be some of that first element to some of our faith sometimes, but the essential part of faith is that complete commitment. That's what we call saving faith. And that's the point of Jesus' death and resurrection. Even though we have to experience physical death in this world, his sacrifice has literally pulled us out of the fiery furnace. We have to trust God to do what's right for us. And then understand, as I remind the folks here at our church every single week, that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And he will never force you to walk alone. Listen, if you aren't a child of God, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you may feel like you're walking alone today. But you don't have to feel that way. Why not accept Christ as your Lord and Savior today? We're going to have a prayer together. I'm going to pray for you. And I pray the Lord will make that difference in your life through Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for bringing us through the furnaces of life, through the trials that we have to go through. We know today that there, there are so many different things that we have to face. But Lord, we also know today that you bring us through those trials. And I'm thankful today that you never leave us and you never forsake us. Thank you for giving us the strength that we need and the hope that we have through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray.